Well, and you finish. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to After Hours here at Linda's Lecture Quilters. Whoop, whoop. I thought you were letting me finish. I have a spiel. I have a certain amount of guidelines that I have to follow. I have a checklist I have to get done or I will not be joining you next week. She will drop me off on the side of the road in my car exactly. and take my car. <laughs> um, so thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, tonight we're going to be looking at the Quilt as Desired book in yes, the Pam Clark series. But before we get started, always make sure that you subscribe to our channel. So it's going to be right down there at the bottom right hand corner. Yep. After you click on that subscribe button, make sure you click the little bell that shows up so you can get notified whenever we go live or whenever we upload any videos or have any yep. interviews. That's a big one. Yes. Those are fun. Yeah. Um, so make sure you get all that done so you can get notified and stay up to date with what we're doing here. Exactly. Because when we do have interviews, we might not have a little thing ahead of time and it just might I'm, pop up. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I know because we have a really fun one coming up in October, but we yeah. won't tell you who it is yet. Um, so anyway, I don't know why I'm crossing my finger. I know who it is. Like I know. <laughs> over here, like anyway. Go ahead. <laughs> so um, we have some really nice weather right now. It is like extremely nice. Windows have been down in my car every single morning, yeah. every single evening. I've been able to go on walks after work without you know sweating all yeah. the way out. You know. <laughs> Um, it's been really, really nice. A nice, cool breeze for us here in Texas. Some of you in the north, I know it's a different story. You're laughing at us because we're excited. We're excited out of a good 72 degrees. Yes. A little sun. It's been nice. I mean, of course, I'm excited for it to get a lot colder and for the, yeah. you, know, you know, the snow to start Well, falling. I don't know. I came, Whatever, when I came into work the other day, the doors were wide open. It's 65 degrees outside and you're in here dancing. I'm always in here the dancing. Weather. I'm always in here dancing. <laughs> doors, the front doors open, the back doors open, the breeze was coming through. I know. It was lovely. <laughs> it was the best thing ever. Even though there might not have been like a wind breeze outside, we had it in the building. I made a breeze. <laughs> I, a, I put a fan to make an extra fan. I had a whole setup going. Yes. Anyway, so anyway. I hope if you guys are having some nicer weather, you're enjoying it as well um, before either it gets... I guess too cold because in the north it'll be too cold. Yes, yeah. Then it's going to be yeah. really cold. And I mean, I, I, I've, I've been, or I've taught up in the north and I taught in flip flops. I well, I didn't taught, excuse well, me, I didn't teach in flip flops. I'm very, like that, I get very, you know, de dressed up when I teach because she would yell at me if I didn't. <laughs> but then when I go to the hotel, I put on flip flops, it's negative four degrees outside and some yeah. shorts. It's the best thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm glad uh, he was talking about come to Houston to see the human, enjoy the humidity. Nah, um, we're, we're happy without the humidity. I'd rather not. Yeah. <laughs> Houston Thank you, does though. have a lot of humidity, that <laughs> it is does. for sure. Um, okay, All right. so anyway. So yeah, we totally went like squirreled off there. Squirrel. Just phew, but yeah, that's, that what what makes it, that's what makes it fun. <laughs> All right, so we talked about what we're doing. We're going to go grab your book if you have it. If not, just kind of follow along. Right. Grab a pen and paper if you want to take notes. Remember these record. so You can always go back and watch it at any time. Mm -hmm. um, and so why we wait, or why we are waiting on a few people to get on, grab your snack. What's the question you can ask? Don't him. point at me. You know I don't answer. You don't know I don't. You know I don't do the question. You do the question. I do the full intro. I give you talking points. You do the question. That's how it's always been. Yeah. Don't switch it up on me. I know. Okay. <laughs> I didn't write down a question though. Think of something. You Boom. got this. You got this. What am I gonna think about? You got it. I don't you got know. It. The people are watching you. They want to see you come up with a question on the fly. You make me quilt on the fly, let alone come up with a question on the fly. That's a whole thing. Okay, here's a good one. Got it. Ding, 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 ding. What is your favorite type of quilt block? Uh, that's what? my question. That's a good question. You know why? Because I looked at because that book and there's quilt blocks. Exactly, because we are going to be actually showing you some designs on quilt blocks. See, I knew you had it in you. I was just waiting on it. I knew yes. it would come out. Well, thank you so mm -hmm. much. <laughs> mm. All right. So, again, tell us what your favorite quilt block is. We are going to get started. Um, do yeah. you want to show them like kind of the different ones we're doing real quick? Um, yeah, I can kind of just take the book back there and kind of just flip through the pages real quick. Yeah, and um, I'll set up the drawing and station. And set up the drawing station. We'll go from there. Yeah. Choo. Alrighty. So back here at the machine, um, we already have a nine patch stitched out for you. We're going to be working with a few other blocks, but we want to give you kind of an ease into more of some beginner entry level blocks, some of those blocks that you see a lot and you just want to get them quilted and off the frame ready to go. Um, the book that we're going to be working in tonight is Quilt as Desired. And really what this book is, is more or less going to be giving you some really good ideas. Now this is a book that just has all those ideas. It does not have any sketching lines um, with arrows. It does kind of show you different designs, but no types of arrows or anything like that. But it really just gives you some really cool ideas. Um, let's look at the table of contents here even. 
um, for all those different blocks that are in there. Um, there's probably three or four designs for each block. Let's just look at this one right here. Um, so many different ideas you can work from, from simple cross hatching across following those seam lines, so maybe doing a wavy cross hatch, continuous curve, all sorts of fun things like that. Um, we'll go through this book and look at a few of the designs, and we kind of morphed them and manipulated them to make them what we wanted them to be, which is the goal that we want to show to you tonight, is that you can take these beautiful ideas that Pam has put in this book for you and kind of take them to the next level with your own little spin. Exactly, exactly. That's what we like to do. Give, just give you some ideas and you do what you want with them. For Be sure. creative. All right, Corey, I think I'm ready. All right, what are you starting us out with? Because you get to start us tonight. Um, so I have a nine patch, right? Yep. Why, right, right, what do you mean, yeah? I was just kind of en engaging in our conversation. Oh, I see. Yes, that's a nine patch. <laughs> so Good I'm job. So I'm do a really simple um, design. Corey, what would you call this design? Because you called it Continuous up. Curve. Okay, Continuous Curve. So that's the design that I'm going to show you. So we've got our practice sheet. Remember, there's practice sheets available uh, for us to, what's going on? Did I do it wrong? No, I'm not doing it that way. Oh, well, it's a nine patch regardless. It's just off focus. You're changing my nine patch. I know, I'm changing you up. Hold on. Changing you up real quick. Let me flip this around. Get you a better angle here. All right. Let's get that. That's a little better. Okay. okay. All right. So that way you can see what I'm actually doing? Yeah. Okay. All right. So here we go. So I'm going to do the nine patch. Summer's having technical difficulties. I see her face. Okay. We're good. All right. <laughs> There's nothing like a live video. I'm telling you people. If you ever see us messing up a lot, just, you know, we're sorry. But when it's live, you just make mistakes. Yeah, do what you, you do. You get to see. Okay, so we're going to get back to what I'm doing. So I'm doing continuous curves, and I want to show you the way that kind of Corey taught me. Really simple design, but super fun. So I'm basically starting right here in the corner, and I'm going to go up like that. Then I'm going to go up here. And the idea is to stay continuous, so that way I don't have to stop and pull up my threads. So notice how I'm doing this. And when I get here, you automatically think, oh, I should go back down. But no, you're actually going to go back around and then repeat the process. Back around, up, down, uh -huh. and then we're going to go down again. Yep. Just kind of going in that buttonhole fashion and then going in um, and coming back and flowing it through and then for that final one you get to work your way around Probably all those there yeah oh it, it's all right camera stand it happens there you go and then you can kind of work your way around all those pieces yeah so if you needed to um, just to have help at the beginning you know while you're practicing you could put some arrows in there like this just to kind of give you direction so you could like take a piece of paper and for instance I'll show you because I had to have something to go off of um, a piece of paper like that. So you just kind of have that and make you some lines and then when you're up there practicing you'll be ready to go. All right Beautiful. Corey I think I'm ready. Okay well come on over and give it a whirl. All righty. So I haven't uh, practiced quilting it yet but. Well I mean continuous curve helps. It's not a hard one to do. All right so I'm going to keep my design over there to kind of give me some hope there. So I'll put on that side. Then I also have my chalk pencil if I wanted to use that. Um, so I'm going to start here, pull up my threads, tie those off a little bit and I can go ahead and cut, get that out of the way. And then here we go. So I'm going to go up up here, down, back around, curve it up, curve it back down. So I'm actually in my stitch regulator mode right now.
And kind of visualize this as an actual nine patch. Whoops, see, I messed up, Corey. What happened? What okay, happened? I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to try to recover. <laughs> uh huh. It's all right. It's all right. That's okay. Just now, go keep going to the left. Now come back this way. There we go. There oh, go. look at that. You can actually Coming recover when you make a huge mistake. Oh, it wasn't a huge mistake. It's a design choice. So maybe I should practice a little bit more next time. But it's all good because we were able to recover. Come back down. And there we go. Beautiful. So not perfect, not perfect, but it gives you the idea. And you definitely can play and practice. And when you have, um, when it's pieced out, you're obviously not going to see all these mistakes, too. So Right. Well, um, then, of course, you're not using a super high contrasting thread. That's true. That's true. Um, that makes a little bit of a difference as well. And you don't have a camera sitting in front of you. Well, that'll do it, too. That'll help. All right, Corey, what you got for us? Okay, um, so I've just got a basic Lone Star here. Um, in the book, you have a um, what they call a spiderweb star, um, and that's just different layers of piecing on that Lone Star, but it's kind of the same idea. So I just want to give you a couple of different ways that you could um, take a different look at that. For this one, I kind of want to break this Lone Star or spiderweb star into, into quadrants. Um, so we're looking kind of like at just this little section right here of these pieces. And in that section, I'm going to be blooming up um, some feathers that go out in this direction. So what I mean by that is I'm going to start here in the center and come in with these plumes. Remember to keep the stems going down towards that seam line. That helps keep the feathers, give a really nice shape. So let's take it this way, this way. Going all the way, and then I'm going to continue down my seam right here, and then mark my way going the other way. So we'll just fill that up, going back and forth, building up that muscle memory. That's the biggest thing you want to do. If you want to add a few more, you can. Come down our seams, down our seams. So it's going to be two layers of stitching right here. Not a whole lot, nothing to worry about. But for this one, remember we talked about having these in quadrants. So I'm basically taking this and rotating it now this way. So these plumes of this feather are going to hit right there now to where they come and match up. Traveling down that stem, down that stem, just like that. And we'll travel down our seam. This is a great time to use a ruler. Um, have your ruler plate on so you can stay doing stitch in the ditch around those um, diamonds. On there take that down and we're going to work our way all the way around doing that now for these outer pieces um, we can kind of work our way around these as well so what i want to do is i will start by going let's go which way do i want to go this way so i'm gonna start right here so this will be my starting point and i will arc it up towards this piece down over around move this so you can see it and just continue with that continuous curve that Diana just taught you. Move it down so you can see it. And just do that continuous curve around these inner pieces. And right now it kind of looks like you're framing the inner part of this lone star. When you get to the starting point, go backwards. So we're going to go this way. And hit all these points all the way around. Ding. Ding, ding, and we'll come back to start. So start and end will be on the same spot. And that'll really help fill up that block. It's a really quick and easy thing to stitch out. And this will give us um, a little bit of opportunity to look at how we can do our rulers as well. Oh, I can't wait to see this one. Oh, thanks. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. So I am actually, I have turned off my stitch regulator for this block because we have a few viewers that don't have stitch regulators and I want to show you that you can still easily do this without having a stitch regulator. Now you have to be very careful when you're working with rulers. Um, so always remember that uh, if, you're, if you're doing it without a stitch regulator. So always remember that. But we're going to start in the center here. Have our tie off stitches. 
And I'll set my threads over here out of the way. And we will start with those feathers. And remember, they're blooming out this way. So if you wanna take your chalk pencil, just to give you an idea of which direction they need to be blooming out, you can kind of just take this and draw an arc with an arrow that way, arc with an arrow that way. And if you need to do the same thing all the way around, feel free to do so. Really, really helps just you to remember that direction because once you get going, you really want to make sure that you're keeping that going and you're not wanting to stop quilting if you don't have to. So remember, no stitch regulator on on this one, so we're going to see how this goes. I have a feeling you'll do just fine. Really good pointers putting the chalk line on there. So we're going to take that down. So this one's actually okay that I'm not having to use my ruler, but if I needed to pull that over, I definitely could. Traveling down that stem. And I'll keep that to there. And this one will go a little further out. So remember we took that over, down. Ooh, see, that was when I should have used my ruler. That's okay. So I'm gonna speed up my constant speed a little bit. Just so I can keep moving. And go that way. There we go. Having a little faster keeps me going with this nice, even, equidistant stitches because with constant speed, you end up basically being your own stitch regulator. Stop that real quick, grab my scissors so I can trim all these threads out of the way. Yeah, and when you're in constant speed, you definitely, um, what Corey's doing, you have to stop. And it is harder to use rulers in constant speed. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, of course. Rulers, you, you really want to be careful if you're doing them. And a thing about constant speed or not having a stitch regulator, um, one, it scares people, but if you get that nice rhythm and you find your speed that works really well for you, it's nothing to be afraid of by any means. Um, I actually prefer most of the time when I do my hand guided work to work in constant speed. Even though I learned on a um, stitch regulated machine, I really like the flow of the machine when I'm doing constant. It just it feels like it moves a little smoother to me. And I don't know, Diana, if you've realized the same thing whenever you do it sometimes. Yeah, no, it, it is smoother. You just have to be comfortable with that feel and that it's going to keep moving on you. Once you get used to that and find your stop and start button, you're good. <laughs> and find your stop and start button, that's true. <laughs> so if you were doing a, um, a Lone Star quilt, would you keep the design the same in each block to keep it consistent or would you change up your design? It depends on what the quilt calls for. You'll have quilts that really come and talk to you. Um, and sometimes you'll find something that really speaks to you across the whole entire design of the quilt. Um, or you might want to do what we um, computerized quilters call concatenating. And you know every other block is a different one, creating a pattern. Um, that way the eye is always looking at different things and not staying stuck on one particular design. But if you find something that really works for you and that you really, really like, go for it. I would do it all over and call it a day. Um, okay, so we've done our inner part. As you can see, super, super fast once you got really comfortable um, with the flow of it. Now remember, this will be our starting point for, we'll do a start like that, for our arcs, and we're gonna make our way going up this way first. So we will take that and pull up our bobbin thread. I'll do a tie off here. And this would all be in the ditch of the piecing, that way it wouldn't be seen. If you, tie, if you prefer to tie and bury your threads, you can do that as well. Um, we'll be having an after hours episode on that here soon as well, so we can teach you how to do that. But this is just arcing to those points. Remember, you're staying on the inside ones. And every, whenever you get to that point, just pause yourself for a quick second. Not too much when you're in constant, but it's a quick second, point, 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 point. That just helps keep really nice, sharp points if you pause for just a quick second before you move on to that next one.
point and point. And then we can tie off our threads. And then we can move the machine and we're good to go. And that block is done. Awesome. That looks really, really good. Well, while they're looking at that block, you get to jump up and do the little basket. I'm doing what? You're doing the little basket with the clam oh, shells. Is it my turn? Yeah. Okay. It's my turn again. All it's right. Your turn again. Go team. That'll be fun. Okay. Um, so what I will do is I'm going to head over. Actually, let me take my stencil with me. Going to head over back to our drawing station. And right here, I am looking at my basket. Now, a lot of us have these traditional basket blocks, same block basically over the whole entire quilt, and you're trying to figure out what to do to kind of switch up the basket. And in this book, there's a couple of different designs to kind of give you this idea. I wanted to show you how to do this clamshell because this one really spoke out to me. I love the texture that it gave the basket. It kind of looked like a natural weave in it, which is really cool. Um, so what we'll be doing is we'll take our one-inch stencil, Okay, and I would do it on the quilt. This is just so you can get an idea. But I could lay this and get markings for this basket. And I could lay this and try to match them up pretty equidistant across the basket. And I'm going to come in with pounce powder. We'll use our marker as pounce powder, for instance, and just pounce that first couple of dots right there. That way it gives me markings. So we'll say here, here, this is totally a guesstimate. Y'all know how I am about my OCD sometimes, so this might be weird for me. Um, but it gives me some type of guesstimate to work with. And we're going to be doing the clamshells going downwards, so like that. So I'm going to start over here in the corner and just kind of make my little clamshell all the way across. And you can choose whatever height you'd like to give the clamshell. Once you get to the edge here, we're going to travel up the ditch of the basket a little bit. And this one on the way back, we're going to hit the tops of this clamshell that we started. Just like that. Kind of looks like a little ruffle. Travel down a little bit. And hit these all the way. Travel down a little bit more and hit them all the way. And you're just doing that as you work down it. You can work your way all the way through until you're comfortable with the design. I'm just going to speed through it real quick. And for this one here at the bottom, I liked um, what Pam did here for you, so I kind of want to give you that same idea. I'm going to take some type of straight edge, and I'd be doing this with a ruler. I'll take this paper for now. And I would come in with my straight edge or my ruler, and I'm just going to take this and I'm going to mark using this back and forth, maybe do a quarter inch marking, just to kind of finish out the bottom of the basket and to kind of separate it from the clamshells. And here you can leave this nice and open. If you would like to, you can just do stitch in the ditch around these inner portions, just so it kind of defines the basket handle. If you wanted to go in there and How give it something else, you definitely could. And then, of course, any type of background fill that you wanted to throw in this, you could, yeah, um, which is cool from our... Cute just like that. Yeah, I mean, it works for here. Um, but you could also come in here with some frills or um, a really, really tight stipple or something like that for a background fill behind your basket. Oh, the stipple would be a good idea. You should do that over there. A little stipple. It doesn't have to be a tight stipple. Yeah, yeah okay, okay, I'll do the stipple right here in the corner. Like, yeah, just like that. There you go. <laughs> That's what you get. Done. Double done. Okay, so I will head over to our machine. It's been kind of weird. We got a larger throat machine. I know. For this. We have a 30 inch throat now, so it's kind of weird. I got all the space. All right. So coming in with my stencil, I've got label side facing down. And I'm going to try as best I can to match up these lines. I'm using the one inch line stencil. And I match up the edge of my basket with some of these lines on the stencil. I don't know why I got super quiet there for a second. I had to think about it. I'm going <laughs> to grab my pounce powder, give it a nice little hit, and take it. And just like I said, you don't need a, it's over the first few lines. So if you want to kind of do it this way, Ooh, a lot of chalk, but that's okay. You can easily take that off. That's what we love <laughs> about pounce powder. So this gives, give me, this gives me some lines and points to follow where I want to start. And can easily brush that off, come in with my eraser and erase that excess chalk off just to get it out of our way. But I will come in 
and I will start working with this. So starting here at our point, the top point of our basket, bring up my thread, do a tie off, and then we are going to start stitching. And we're going to every single one of these one inch points. So the goal is to have a one inch cross out. We'll see our cross out clamshell. We'll see how that works though. Okay, so what that does is that gives us the ability to get to that point. Now I wanted to stop here so you could see how we could easily work around this. So for going in this ditch, I'm actually going to move back over into stitch regulated mode so you can see me use a little bit of the ruler. So let me change my machine over to stitch regulated. And I'm going to work with my ruler here to kind of get, and it kind of keeps me flowing in this and I'm kind of turning this ruler as I'm going. It just gives me something to apply pressure to so I can make sure I'm staying in the ditch. So let's just move these out of the way. Let me cut my stray threads off real quick too. And we had a question if we ever use blue chalk and we do so we'll have to use that next time. I actually did use blue chalk this time. Oh you did? Yeah this one okay. was blue. Um, so now I'm just going to hit the centers of those on my way back. Once I get to here, this will be a half one, so I'll get to right there. I can take my ruler, travel down this, and now I'll hit the centers of these as I go. All the way across. So then I can grab my ruler, work down it a little bit, and hit the centers of these as I go back. So something just to add a little bit of extra frill, if you wanted to do a larger clamshell, do just a, do a wider distance from those. So instead of using the one inch stencil, maybe you could have used the two inch line stencil. And that would have given you a much wider distance to go through. Or the one and a half. I think or the one and a half. one and a half. Yep, so. yep. Continue down. And work your way all the way around. Coming all the way down to this one, and then this will be our final one here. So if we have Statler users watching us, we're actually doing this on a Statler. So yeah, this is all can, done on a Statler today. You can definitely see it will do freehand. So then I'm going to take this, kind of line this up, and we're going to go across, and then I will drop down. I'm totally doing this opposite of the way I normally would because my hands are all over the place but I can easily just work back and forth down this basket. And what I'm doing, is I guess I should have given you that tip, what I'm doing is I'm using the lines of this ruler. I've got a quarter inch marking on each of these. And so as I'm working down, I am just changing that quarter inch to match up with the bottom of the piecing for this basket, for instance. So I just work down and that's how I know I've got a beautiful quarter inch line stitch. Yeah, I like that with all the, the rules that we have. This one's the 12 by two, but we have the different sizes. It does, does make it a lot easier to see all that. Yeah, um, so I'm just going to come in, let's, since the beauty of free handing, come in to see, oh, see how much wavier that is. Meow. <laughs> Give it a little bit of Give it a little flare. There, yeah. <laughs> and then when I'm done, I can stop there. Now, if you wanted to keep it rolling, and you were doing the same thread color in the background, from here you could come out of that and start doing your stipple. You could change your threads and now do your stipple. I'm just going to bounce right into that stipple. So this will just be a little bit of a stipple around this. And there's really only a few rules to stippling. Um, you don't want to have any points, you don't want to cross over anything, and you don't want to get into a pattern. And other than that, you've got it pretty golden. Um, I'll stop right there. But yeah. you could do that easily all the way around, maybe in a different uh, color to match your background a little bit more. But just kind of showing you how you could amp up your basket blocks a little bit more. Fun. Okay. Well, I'm going to jump up and show you the next design. Okay. Okay. So we are, I'm actually going to work on page 32. And I am going to be doing this design right here for the. Um, it's like a fan. What's it called again? Hang on. Uh, grandmother, grandma's fan, Grand I think. Grandmother's, grandmother's fan. fan. 
and then but I'm going to do this design instead of that since Corey showed you some feathers so I'm going to merge the two together okay so to do the curves right there we're actually going to be using the arch guide we have and this one's the six inch because we're doing nine inch blocks and I'm going to start off at the bottom here and obviously I'll be using the machine instead of a pen but the idea is to kind of go like that and then you, you bring it up and match it up to the next curve line and then go again so to prevent from getting a lot of ink on there I'll just do it a couple times and I think you guys will get the idea so I'm matching it up to that next line that quarter inch line like Corey had on the straight line we actually have on the arches too again this is the six inch one that I'm using okay so we're, we'll just I'll just continue doing that the rest of the way just kind of freehand it real quick and get that done out of the way and then I'm going to jump over and do the little loop-de-doo things so here we go the little loop de doop thing thingies the little loop de doo things all right so I'm going to come this way go wrap around go back up to the top make a point and then do the same thing again point I like it point point and then you'll be curving a little bit so just ready for the curve point 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 and point so then I'm gonna uh, you could either do a stitch in the ditch back over or I'm not gonna do that um, for the block sense and then I would tie off pull back in and then I can come over here and then do my there back up come back down and then see how I have to think it's okay to think and then <laughs> I messed up on that one that's okay <laughs> but it gives good. you the idea I like it yeah so we got fat and skinny there I like it <laughs> um, a good question popped up in the chat window yeah, go for it. Um, was whenever we're doing our quilting do we ever use or how often do we use the black light and the black light on some machines have it standard some machines it's an option um, but I use the black light on the machine um, quite often due to the fact that, especially if you're ever doing white on white quilting, I'm going to switch this real quick. Now we have a bunch of different lights overhead right now, um, but it does allow you to see that white thread on that white fabric a lot easier. Um, it's great for white on white quilting. Whenever I'm doing neon thread like this on black fabric and I really want to pay attention to the quilting itself, not as much the piecing. I'll flip on that black light, and that really helps. Well, I'll just try it. Let me try it in the black light. We'll oh, show since okay. they're asking. Go ahead. Worst case is I just mess it up, and that's okay because I'm good at that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's turn that on for you. Kind of brighten this up a little bit. Got a little, a little dim. There, there we go. There you go. Okay. And if it's hard to see, let us know, and we will turn it back off. All right. They'll, they'll be able to see the thread. Might not be able to see the piecing, but <laughs> you'll see the thread. Okay. 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 Okay, so I'm starting over here, and I've got my little ruler like we were talking about over there, and I'm lining it up to the center over here to the corner of my block, and I'm going to hold the ruler, and then I'm just going to go slow, stop there. Now I could stitch up in there, and then I, until I line it up like that, right? Yeah, so you're trying to get the right curve. Okay, yeah. there we go. I got it. I just so couldn't yeah. see. Yeah. Lining up to the next line on the template there. There we go. So kind of like we were doing with the ruler, she's just lining up to that next line in the template, um, which just allows you to give a, gives you a nice uh, distance and a nice equal, equal distance <laughs> um, mm -hmm. on that arc. Okay, hang on just a second. I have it on the edge there, so it's kind of pulling the fabric since we didn't clamp the fabric down. There we go. Go back up, line it back up over to the next arch. Beautiful. And then I'm just gonna kind of fake this one. Oh, didn't mean to fake it that bad. Okay. I'll put it in there. There you go. I like the movement in it. <laughs> I like the movement in it. 
You know, you can all you always know you can be entertained with me. That's the best part. I think that's why they love you so much. You can I can entertain you. It, um, I'm glad you can see the, the coloring. It's really hard for me to see this the quilt. The, okay, I'll the switch design. it back to the bright lights. No, it's fine. Yes. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. I can do this. I can okay. do it for the people. All right, here we go. Are you laughing? <laughs> no, I'm not laughing, laughing at you. At I'm not walking over I'm to Summer and talking. I'm just being goofy. It's fine. <laughs> I'm being goofy tonight. I know. All right, so here we go. I'm going to go down and do my loops, come back up to my point, go down and do my loops, come back up, point, down and do my loops, come back up to my point, down and do my loops, come back up to my point. Kind of changes on you when it starts. The fan starts going a different direction. <laughs> All about just working with it, just moving with it. Okay, and then I'm just gonna pull up real quick here, just because I want to show the design to be the way it should look. And I'm gonna come over here and loop to do this. And somebody just took my design. Oh. Thank you, Corey. No problem. Sorry. I bl blame it on Cousin. <laughs> Cousin's the one that told me I need to come back over here and get ready for drawing. All righty. And then, so the next one we're going to do. Corey, do you have what you need up there? Hmm? Yeah. All righty. So here we go. So now I'm going to put this one in right there. All right. Remember how we said we could go and do different... Uh, pull from different designs to make your own. So that's kind of what I did. Got my back part here. Keep it skinny in. Then I'm going to pull up. Wrap around here. Then I'm going to go back up. Do this one. And then go up here. And do that. So just like that, you can use a ruler down here with a little bit more practice, obviously. Um, some loops here and a totally different designs and you have a cute little block in your grandmother's fan. Looks good. Alrighty. So I'm going to pull this up and I think, Corey, are we ready for your last famous one? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I kind of just switched the design on the fly. Oh, it'll be great, whatever so, it is. All right. So I am going to be using the circle stencil in the center of our double wedding ring for this instance. It's just a single wedding ring. So I'm going to use this template as a, um, just a marker, for instance. But we would be using our circle stencil and pouncing that out. So I would use my pounce powder and pounce around said circle. And I'd get something like that. And for this one, <clears throat> There were a couple of different ways that I was going to take it, um, but I really want to do a um, feather wreath in the center. So that's one idea, but then I also want to give you another one. So for that feather wreath, we'll use that circle stencil. And for this one, we want those feathers to really reach out and grab the pieces of this. So I come out, grab this one, take it, and then come around, around, around. As we're getting to that point, reach out and grab that one around, around. And around all the way through here taking that filling that last one in and then we'll come around in that same spiral we're gonna do the center portion here the portion what was that word and just like that I can finish out that center so that gives me something really easy really fast to throw in the center if you wanted something a little bit more simple we could do the basic eight and grab a piece out of that so let's show you how that would look so if I want something a little bit more simple remember we have our basic eight line stencil my little dots just like that and from here we can kind of do those loop-de-dupes that Diana just did on the grandmother's fan so we'll start right here and take that loop-de-doop -doop. and we're gonna come all the way out to that point and reach it come in to there all the way into here 
out to this point. There. 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 All the way out to there. And to there. Just like that. So I think this is actually the one I was going to stitch out. I'm going to stitch out for you, but I want to give you two different ideas. One, use your circle stencil, get a nice feather wreath all the way out to those points, or come in with something a little bit more modern um, with these loops and these lines to really just fill up um, this inner portion here. And you can do the same thing for these pieces right here. So we could take our basic eight, but only use the north and the south ones. I'm sorry, north, south, east, west. Wow. Did I really just say north and south ones? That was one <laughs> line. It's fine. It's fine. Great day. Um, but I could take this and come in with a little stretch over over here just like that kind of just a squished version of this one and you could put those in the peels now with most wedding rings we have the piecing like that through here so for this one just to give ourselves something nice and easy and to go with the theme of what we're doing let's do it like that I can oh that looks like an eyeball now I put those on there <laughs> I could take this and just do easy loops and stay in each one of those little pieces and work my way, for instance, all the way around this. Um, and that'd be a really quick, really easy kind of throw out of how to stitch out one of these. So I'm going to go do, actually I might do the feather one. I'm feeling like a feather. It's a feather night for me. So I'm going to go do the feather one. <laughs> but then we'll do that one in there and then we'll just do the loops around it. Yay. Perfect. Looks go good. Team. I love it. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead over here at the machine. I'm going to grab my circle stencil. And just to make sure everything is nice and straight, I'm going to use my basic eight. So I would lay my basic eight over my block and match these four corners with the four corners of the piecing on the inside. So I will line that up just like so. Cool. We'll pull it up and check. And for this one, I really only need the center point, but I just want to make sure it's centered. So once it's there, I'm going to use my chalk pencil in that center. And I have now found my center point. So I can take my circle stencil and place that center point over the other center point. Now this one is going to be a really tight piece because this is a larger circle, but it works. You get the idea. Give our pounce powder a little hit. Go around in that circle. That gives us that, oh, that's a tight one. Um, but it gives us the idea that we're working towards. So we'll work over here. We'll start and tie off. And have that first feather go out all the way there. And these are gonna be a little tighter around because we did a much bigger uh, circle, but that's okay. Go all the way out there. And this one I'll just follow around. And follow that that way. I'm going to pop this out of your water for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I can do it. And then I am back into such regulated mode as well. Um, so take that and you follow this one all the way around. Go up and grab that last feather. And now we're going to go this way. Now we want to get closer to that center dot. So the inside feathers are going to be a little larger. That was an awkward one. That's okay. Sometimes in those, when it starts curving this hard, you really got to get creative with how you're going to, like, I'll do a baby feather there, but a bigger one here. Got a little creative on how you're going to get them done. That is so pretty, though. Just like that. I like the movement of that. Yeah, that looks great. Um, and then I'll use the basic eight real quick to show you how we would do those corner pieces here. We'll do this one's a good size. So I'll take my basic eight and I want to match the straight line with the points, the inner of this wedge. So I can take that and take that one and get it pretty well centered. Just a good look. This is really kind of a, just a guesstimate here. And I'll take my pounce powder, lay that over and that gives me something. Oof. There's a lot of pounce powder for you. <laughs> Brush that off just to give myself the idea. Yeah. And I'll start here on one of these points. Tie off. And go to work. So come in with a loop. 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 
Wait. Just like that. Looks good. So something really easy, something really simple, just to throw in. Um, you could blend all these together, but just to kind of give you a few ideas and to see, yeah, it really is um, as easy as you as you see. Um, you know, we you always tell us we make it look easy. It's really really simple just to get on here, start using your chalk pencil, draw out, gain that muscle memory, and you'll be able to do things just like this tonight. Yes, awesome. Good job. Woo. So it's kind of, fun. It's kind of impromptu. I know, right? <laughs> yes. Um, so, what the heck are these? Well. What is this, New our Year's? Little, our little studio tech and a half. Studio tech and a half. Summer's our I'm studio tech. Screaming. And Ryan's our half. <laughs> studio tech and a half. Just let us know that. I'm climbing under the table. We actually, this is actually our 200th, 200th video. <laughs> Right? Oh, Look goodness. <laughs> Whoa, wasn't expecting that. <laughs> so, he brought these over for us to vote. Our 200, oh, gosh. <laughs> Our 200th video that we've uploaded. <laughs> so, that's super exciting. So hopefully, we didn't blow your eardrums out on that, that one. That was crazy. Um, yeah, but, yeah, I can't 200 videos that. uploaded on 200 YouTube. 200 videos uploaded. So, you know what that means? There's so much stuff that you guys can watch. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so really what that means. So, if you're just joining us in the last few months or if this is your first time watching, there's nine, 199 more videos behind it. <laughs> and I think they all have really good information. Yeah, no, they touch on all different things. A ton of different things, from you know threads and battings to yeah. you know quilting to yeah. you know, all sorts fabrics. To machine instruction. To the machine. Machines. Yeah. So, I mean, there's all computerized stuff. instruction. There's Anything so much you there. Anything you can think of, there's a video there for. Okay, it. well, I wouldn't go that far. Okay. <laughs> don't clock us on that, <laughs> please. <laughs> well, give us. You know, you can always tell us in the feed next time what we don't have on there and what we could do then, right? Yeah, That's for a good sure. way to definitely say this. Definitely. But yes, it's exciting. Well, that was all a fun. Right. This was a fun night to get all those different ideas. I love yes. this book. So, Quilt um, as Desired. Quilt as Desired by Pam Clark. You can get it on our website, right, yep. shown here right below. It'll be a special code for the yep. book. Yep, so use a special promo code for the books, uh -huh. After Hours LEQ. Okay. Um, that'll get you 20% off the books, um, yeah. which is a really good uh, entry level to get you in and really understand how those books yeah, work. And all of the see. books. All Not of just them. this one, but any of the Pam Clark books. Yep. So, um, so next week. We're we gonna are <laughs> really going to switch it up. This yes. is like a huge switch up for us. Like, yes. Uh, I, mm. You thought I did bad back there. No. <laughs> I'll take her car and drop her off. <laughs> on the side. No, I'm just kidding. Um, next week, we are going to move to a domestic sit-down sewing machine. And we are going to be quilting things out on a domestic machine sitting down, which I know a lot of you do that at home. Exactly. And um, we've gotten some requests to say, you know, I would love to have a long arm. It's just not in the budget right now. Is there any way you could show us a little bit more on a sit-down model? Yeah. Because um, that's kind of what I have, and that's where my budget is right now, which or is fantastic. Or my space. Or my space. Yeah. That's a big thing. Space, space is a huge too. Thing. Yeah. Tell me about it. Space. <laughs> it's a big thing. Yeah. Um, so we are going to be looking at the. Um, if this one's just the first ever designs with lines quilting sketchbook. Yeah. It's just it's just this white one right here, um, and this really takes you into. It comes as a starter kit. Yeah. So it's called the designs with lines starter kit. Correct. Um, and the book within that is this one right here. And it has the basic eight and it has a bunch of the one inch lines. Correct, so we will yeah. be kind of moving over to the domestic machine and sitting down and doing some free motion quilting. Yeah, just to show you that if, so if you have that, you can still use these stencils and use these books and create, create, create. Of course, that's the goal. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see how it works out for us. But we'll it'll, be <laughs> it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Y'all get a kick out of it. Yeah, I know, At least right? be ready. That'll be fun. <laughs> it'll be company hour. <laughs> company hour? Comedy hour. Oh, you said I company. Was, I was trying to say it as I was laughing. And it just this is the book. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, but thank you all so much for joining us tonight yes. here at After Hours. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did here yes. quilting with you. Um, if you have any questions, always leave them in the comment section below. We yep. try to check those at least once a day yeah. um, and get back with you as soon as we can. Mm -hmm. um, but from all of us here at Linda's Electric Quilters, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.